So one of the first things I like to do before I get started is I like to mark wherever there's a seam on the seat cover originally so I can see that there's a seam that comes up here that meets right here. So I'll mark it. And then I see right here where this one ends, I'll mark that. So that way when I take my patterns apart, I know where these two meet. So that way when I go to sew them back together again, they'll be in the same place. So actually this seat cover here is gonna to be totally custom. I'm not duplicating this at all. It's going with a whole different style. But this is what I would do if I was duplicating this design. So I would do the same right here where this insert ends. And then same thing here in the back. I would do the same thing here in the backrest. Everywhere these intersections meet, right here. This is what I would be doing if I was duplicating this seat cover, which I won't, I'm not. So here, my friends, is technique number 366. So what I have here is I use a box cutter with the break off blades. And what I do is I take a grinder and I grind all the edges here, both sides. And it kind of makes like a serrated edge and it cuts the threads really nice without cutting the material. Okay, I take my blade and I start working the seam. Cutting the threads only. Remember, you don't want to cut the material. Unless, I guess, unless you're not going to be using that material anymore. Sometimes it'll speed up the process to be careless. But if you want accurate patterns, you just want to cut the thread. So I'm going to do this all the way around. I don't even know why I'm doing this because I'm making a completely custom set of seat covers for this in leather. I'm not using these original patterns, but just to kind of show you the process. So it's a lot easier to do this with the seat cover still on the seat. That would be technique number 955. Because if you take the seat cover off first, it's gonna be flopping around in your hands and nothing, you don't have three hands where you can have two holding it while one hand takes the threads apart. So it's a lot easier to do it while it's still on the seat because the seat itself is gonna be your third hand. So you got your first hand here, your second hand here, your third hand is holding the seat cover here. So what I will do is I'll take this apart. But what I'm going to do is before I get to this intersection right here, I'm just going to stop it right there. I'm not going to finish taking it apart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do this one. But I'm not going to go all the way to the end here. So when I do the entire seat, It's, all these pieces are still going to be connected to each other. And the reason I do that, because in some complicated seats, you can refer back to how it was put back together, or how it's together, so that way when you go to put it back together, 
There's no guessing at all. So I'm gonna leave this connected. So when it comes to parts like this, I'll go ahead and take this apart. But I'm gonna leave this connected. Think you're catching the drift. Oh, that's a uh, old slang lingo from the old days. Anyway, take it all apart. Being that I have this one here connected, <laughs> I can go ahead and take this one all the way down. like that. So and being that this is still connected here, that's my reference for when it goes time to go back together again. And because I took one side apart, they're, they're symmetrical. So the left is just like the right. So there's no need really to take this side apart and save you some time. So when, when you make the pattern, you'll just flip it to make a left and a right. And we'll be using these panels right here to make the patterns. And then being that this one here, you never took it apart, it's clear how it goes back together again. So there you go, my friends. That's how it's done. That's how you get your patterns. If you're gonna be duplicating the original seat cover. So now that you did all the separation, this is what it's like when it comes off. See how they're still connected. So they're all connected so that way you know how the puzzle goes back together. That's technique number 422. It's always been 422. So anyway, this keeps you from um, trying to figure out how to put the jigsaw puzzle back together. You have the answer in your hand. You're not trying to figure it out. So, my friends, if this has been a helpful video for you, I'd appreciate it very much if you like and subscribe and comment. And uh, let me know if uh, this was helpful for you. And um, I'm a working upholstery shop. So I do this kind of work every day. It's always going to be something different. So I got a lot more videos to come and they'll be coming often. So till next time, we'll see you later.